This is Shudders Inc. with Bruce Williams and Glenn Lavender. Hi and welcome to episode 554 of Shutters Inc. This is Bruce Williams from ShuttersIncPodcast.com. Hi Bruce, my name's Glenn. Nice to meet you. And that is Glenn Lavender from CreativePhotoWorkshops.com.au. How are you, mate? It's good to talk again. Who is this? Yeah. <laughs> Have we met? Exactly. Can't just jump Ex- into that. I should, well, exactly. First, I'd like to apologise to the listeners uh, that we're back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should start things off you know, on the right, the right note. Yeah, that's and it. How have sympathies. you been? I've I've been okay, mate. It seems it seems well. How long's it been? It feels like you know, at least oh, three weeks, four weeks. Yeah. I'm thinking it's close on three months. Really? That's like six yeah. weeks. It's <laughs> it's like twelve weeks. <laughs> so when did you go? When did you go to uh, Africa? Alaska. That's the one. Saturday uh, in the night. At, at the thing. beginning of September. So we did our last podcast sometime in August. Middle of August. I said so August, September. We've had all of it? September, all of October, and half of November. That's, that's nearly three months, Bruce. It's like 12 Almost. months. Almost. Almost. So, Goodness. yeah. So what's been happening in your world? Oh, don't worry about my world. So that's, first, the, the thing I've been wanting to know for three months yeah. is... Did that little capture device finally arrive? Oh, don't even get me started. Oh, what a way to start the podcast. Let's get you started. Do not get me started. Start you up. Come on, come on. So what was it called I, again? A te- a te- a te- oh, look, a te- I'm, I'm, I'm even loath to mention the product name really? now. Yeah, because they, you know, the, their Kickstarter said, oh, we, we're going to be shipping these in by late July. That's right. And I thought, okay, it's cutting it fine, but I reckon, you know, at least four weeks they can get that to me. You know, that that shouldn't be a problem. And July came and went, no indication from them that the product had shipped. August came and went. And probably mid-August, I sent them an email and I said, look, is this thing going to get here before the end of the month? I said, because I'm going on a a big trip, you know, from Australia to Alaska. I really want to be able to take that, you know, device with me. And if it's not going to get here, I'd like to get my money back. And I got a reply saying, oh, sorry, we can't give you a refund. You know, the, the order is in the system, but it should be shipping any day now. <laughs> Uh, I was like, mm, uh, this is not sounding promising. And sure enough, departure day came and product had not arrived and I had to go to Alaska without it. Oh, what a and, and And the thing was, I got home from Alaska. And it still wasn't there. And it still wasn't yeah, there. Why did I guess that was going to be the case? Yeah, and it arrived about a week after we got back from, like, so, you know, we got back from Alaska, what, 23rd of September? So it would have been pretty much the end of September before it arrived. Man. So a little peeved by that. Not not a great great start for the relationship with the new company, is it? No, you know, and I, you know, okay, I get it. It's a it's a Kickstarter project. You you assume there's always going to be a few, you know, speed bumps along the way. Yeah, but this is not but the first time for them. They and there's exactly not, yeah. that was exactly what I was going to say is the fact that this was not their first product. It was a second generation. They they knew you know how much interest there was in the product they should by now have a bit of an idea about what turnaround time is like yeah. for you know getting a new product you know getting all the machining done and all of the circuit boards you know made up and all all of the things that go to putting a device like this together they should have had an idea of what sort of time frame was required and to get it wrong by a factor of two whole months just doesn't seem plausible to me. Makes you, well, it makes you wonder just how far along the pro were they ever realistic dates to start with, all that kind of stuff, and you're just trying to capture interest from people on an early enough. But I don't know. Anyway, yeah. forget the forget the, the the sour taste. Have you tried it? I, I have not, <laughs> uh, honestly. <laughs> um, of course, you've been moving. That's fair enough. I should, I, actually, I, I, I should say no. I, I have got it out of the box, and I did put it got on it the out camera. Of the box, and you put it on um, the camera. Well done, you. Uh, Look at you but going. I have not. But I have not had a chance to get out and actually 
would try shooting with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just been one of those things. You know, we came home from Alaska. We had literally two weeks and two days to pack up a house we'd been living in for 12 and a half years and... If you've ever moved out of a house after that amount of time, you know how much crap you accumulate. Yeah, yeah we had a, a whole bunch of council cleanups where we got rid of so much crap. And then, you know, it came came down to the last, you know, yeah, the weekend prior to the, our move on the Tuesday. And uh, a mate loaned me his box trailer, which I threw on the back of the car, and I ran uh, two loads of stuff from Gosford up to Kurumbong, dropped them off here at the new place. Things that were either delicate or were just cumbersome or awkward for the removalists to deal with, and I thought, no, I'd rather just deal with yeah. those myself. You know, and then, you know, it comes the Tuesday morning and the removalists arrive and there's just still so much crap <laughs> that's not in boxes. You're just like, ah! Oh, my God. And, and then you get here and you unpack everything and you're just going, why did we bring that with us? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we've now been here six weeks, and just this morning was our first council clean-up, and we just got rid of so much more crap. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, so the six weeks that we have been in this house has mostly been still just unpacking boxes you know wow. we still haven't finished unpacking boxes we're, we're 95 okay. percent of the way place, there. i moved into this place in 99 and i still haven't unboxed some stuff <laughs> <laughs> all vital stuff i don't even know what's in them yeah, vital. exactly you should think so, after uh, after 20 odd years of not no, or 24 years of not needing it you could just put the whole box in the bin but no <laughs> exactly so um we are absolutely loving the new house. That's good to hear. Um, this is the first time we've owned a house this new. Like this house yeah. was only, you know, built and you know given its occupancy certificate about eighteen months ago. Man. You know, it's it's essentially a brand new house. So it's nice to move into a place and go. There's nothing I need to fix. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it too, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's lovely, and we're loving the neighbourhood. Yeah. It is so quiet. It is just gorgeous. Well, that's good. It's it's essentially a housing estate that we are in the second stage of the estate, which has just been completed. They're now starting to build. Oh, I shouldn't say it's starting to build. There's probably uh, 30 or 40 houses in the third stage that are now occupied yeah. and, and probably another 30 or 40 odd that are under construction at the moment. And so, you know, I've be I made it a, a promise before we even moved. I said to Kath, you know, I'm going to really make an effort to set some goals regarding my health that when we move into the new house I want to start a daily routine and you know I'm going to take the dog out for a run on the push bike every morning I don't know the dog it's a good cycle oh oh he's a clever dog yeah. oh, no, so, so he cycles and you run in front of him is that, <laughs> that how it works? that's that, that's how it works yeah actually he just sits on the bike and I tow him yeah. oh that's, that's why, <laughs> yes. why should you put the effort in that's right. So, and and I've been, I think, reasonably good. I think 12 out of the last 15 days, I've been out for a, a, a ride in the morning with the dog running along beside me and That's doing good. three or four Ks each morning. The dog's got to be loving it. Oh, he is loving it big time. So, so obviously, I didn't know he had two dogs. Obviously, two dogs. So it's well. The very sad news of you're losing your dog this week. Yeah, so Aztec, who we had from eight weeks of age he was actually a birthday present for max on max's eighth birthday he, he had a great run and he was a beautiful dog we loved him to bits friday of last week i uh, had an early start we did an outside broadcast so i was up at you know four o'clock in the morning which meant Tarot. i knocked off yeah. knocked off at one i got home here at one thirty, and 
got home to find that Aztec had completely lost the ability to stand up. And it just meant a very long afternoon and a very long night uh, where Kath and I were on two-hour shifts. Uh, we'd sleep for two hours and then get up and the other one would have two hours sleep. And she couldn't lift him. He was probably 20 kilos. And so I would have to pick him up, carry him outside to the grass. But in the whole time after I got home at, you know, 1 o'clock or one thirty Friday afternoon through till Saturday morning, I didn't see him eat. I didn't see him yeah. drink. I didn't see him go to the toilet. And he just, he couldn't stand up on his own. If you took your arm out from under him, he just crumpled. And uh, so we, we rang the vet Friday afternoon, said, we, can we get in there tomorrow morning? They got us in at 11 o'clock. And we uh, or actually, <laughs> this might seem like an odd detail to bring up, but the, the, the appointment with the vet was for 10 to 11. So we got down there at quarter to 11 and we, you know, we, I'm, I'm sitting there in the vet you know, uh, surgery waiting room holding Aztec on my lap because I didn't want to put him down on the ground because that just meant having to bend down and pick him up again. So it was easier to just leave him on my lap. The vet comes out of his office, takes one look at us and goes, oh. And I said, yeah, he's he's really gone downhill in the last 24 hours. I said, he can't stand up anymore. Now, I've just got to interject here because I realized after I finished recording that I didn't actually get around to the whole point of why I was saying that it it was an odd detail to say that our vet appointment was at 10 to 11 on Saturday morning. And the reason was it was Remembrance Day. And I kid you not, as the vet was putting the first of the two needles in, we could hear the last post playing on the radio outside the room that we were in. And I just thought that was so poignant, maybe. I don't know if it's the right word or not, but, um, yeah. So we will always remember Remembrance Day as the day we put Aztec down. So, anyway. So we've carried him in and we've put him on the, the table and... The interesting thing, Kath Kath made a note of this later. She said, you notice that we put him on that table and he didn't even flinch and he hated being on that table. And it was like, yeah. And uh, so anyway, I just said to him, I said, look, it's time. So, yeah, so we had to say goodbye to Aztec. The other dog, Randy, the one we inherited from the army, he is very sad. He's he's oh. really missing his mate. I think I think he's adapting to it now. But those first couple of days, you know, Sunday and Monday, uh, it seemed like he was off his food. He wasn't interested in eating anything. I, he was just sort of moping around, like, "Where's my friend gone?" You know. Poor bugger. And I said, I said to Kath, you know, it must be a hell of a shock for him because his entire life he's had other dogs around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as a pup on the farm in the Northern Territory and then with the explosive detection dog squad in the army, he's always had other dogs. And then he came to our place and he had Aztec and now Aztec's gone and suddenly he's locked in a yard that's got a seven foot colour bond fence all around it. He can hear that there are dogs on the other side of all three fences, but he can't see them and he can't interact with them. And, and, you know, it's got to be really hard for him. So, yeah, so he is absolutely loving his morning run. And if we see other dogs, we we try and stop and have a chat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, there's just been so much going on, you know. So, like I said, unpacking, trying to get this room set up and as – you know, anyone who's been listening to this podcast knows I'm an audio engineer and you can probably hear that this room is reverberant, like, blah, I hate it. But I have plans for acoustic treatment for this room, which will come in time. It's just been a case of priorities and, you know, the wife has priorities that supersede mine. <laughs> 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 That's for two. Yeah, there's the sort of stuff you, you take your diet time and do when you have the, yeah. the luxury of time to do and, it, and, isn't and it? The, yeah. yeah, and of course, I, I don't want to rush and do a half ass job. Exactly. You know, I would rather take the time and get it do right. Do a three quarter so. ass job. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so. Okay, now let's get on to important. I'm, I'm, again, I'm really sad about your doggo, but uh, important. Yeah. How was Alaska, mate? We haven't even talked Alaska was. Absolutely amazing. 
absolutely but loved I'm it. I'm for the butt. Oh, yeah, there's a butt coming. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend it as a destination for anyone who has not ever considered it as a destination. Now, obviously, you need to dress for the cold. We were there in what was essentially their fall. And daytime temps, I mean, I say you dress for the cold. It depends what you're used to. You know, as exactly. Australians who are used to, you know, quite temperate climates, it was cold for us. But we dressed for it and we had a great time. And, you know, the the frustrating part of the trip was that the primary reason for me going was because I wanted to photograph the Northern Lights. Yeah. And we were on the ground in Alaska for two weeks or, well, 12 days. And in those 12 days, we had solid cloud cover 24-7. <laughs> That's always the way, dude, isn't it? Did not even see the stars. Yeah. You know, and it's just unfortunate. And it's so one of those things you the- cannot... But you know, it's like every time there's some sort of um, uh, um, event on in the night sky anywhere in the yeah. world, it's always, it's always I remember the last time there was a blood moon, and I and I was you know That's messaging right. you and going, "Oh man, are you seeing how good this yeah, is?" And then, <laughs> and yeah. You're like, "No, nah, solid cloud cover down solid here." Solid cloud. <laughs> oh god. Uh, That's, that um, was and, I actually ended up being on the radio with the ABC in Newcastle because the the drive time guys they they were short of a, a topic one afternoon and we were talking about you know what had happened with my trip to Alaska and so they made a uh, a decision that they they'd have it as a, a talk back subject for the afternoon you know when have you planned something and everything's gone almost right but just not quite you know and and so they got me on to have a chat about it and as i said you know you have to plan so far ahead you know when you're traveling to the other side of the globe you obviously have to you know make plans months in advance and and for all of the 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 other touristy stuff that we wanted to do we needed to book in because you know, it was coming to the end of the season because they they shut down at winter. Like they course, just so. go, they go into hibernation with the bears. They really do. So we had to book in for all of the stuff that we wanted to do. So you you kind of have to lock yourself in to a, a in, in our case a three week period as it was for our entire trip, and hope for the best. Yeah. And you just can't plan on what Mother Nature is going to do. Pays you know? your money, it takes your chances. Exactly. You know, yeah. and we flew into Anchorage and start talking to people and they, they'd hear your accent and they go, oh, where are you from? And you go, Australia. And they go, oh, wow, why are you here? And it's like, oh, I came to shoot the Northern Lights. They're like, oh, they were out this morning. Yeah, four o'clock. <laughs> it's like, yeah, great. Okay, it's well, like fishing, course, dude. You should, have, you, should have, you should have been here last week. Yeah, Exactly. Uh, if, if so, there's, there's a meme that goes around in fishing that the, the fishing was so good today, I thought it was last week. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> and that could apply to so many so many of our little passions can't it yeah yeah but but look we had an absolutely amazing time just loved every minute of it of it um i've i've not even yet had the time to sit down and look at my photos do you think you've got anything any good do you, was there any moments that stood uh, out or There'll be a couple of landscapes that I'll be happy with. You know, Denali National Park. Oh, my God. It is just phenomenal. For, for anyone who's not familiar with it, this is a national park that... Called Denali. The, called Denali, yeah. <laughs> you can drive <laughs> your own vehicle into the park to, I think it's the nine-mile marker, and... That's the furthest you can take a private vehicle. Beyond that, the road goes into, I think it's about 95 miles. But at the moment, and about, uh, I think it was about two years ago, at the 43-mile marker, there was a landslide that took out uh, 100 metres of road. And... At the moment, they are building a new elevated road bridge that will sort of, you know, circumnavigate that portion of the landslide. And so at the moment, the tour operators, which are all buses, like a, a, you know, 
equivalent of an American school bus, they're driving into the 41-mile marker where there is a turnout bay and they can do a u-turn and and take you back out so all of the tours are now going as far as the 41 mile mark and then back out of the park so we did one of those tours i think it was about six hours on the bus and you're driving along and you're looking out and it is just the most jaw-dropping vista you know and and we were fortunate that when we got there they had just received what they call Termination dust. Oh. And termination dust is the first dusting of snow that signals the end of the summer period. Because as they will tell you, we go from summer to winter yeah. in about A week. two or three weeks. Yeah. The, the, the spring and the, and the fall are really short. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so this termination dust is the first dusting of snow. And we got there about 48 hours after the first dusting of snow. So you're, you're driving along and you're looking at all these beautiful mountain ranges that are covered in snow at the top, but it fades out. And then you've got all these beautiful browns and reds and oranges of all of the fall colours on the low-lying land. So it's just gorgeous to look awesome. at. Awesome. And you're driving along, and you're and you're looking at this vista, and you're just going, "Oh my god, that is amazing!" And then you come yeah, the around corner. the corner, and it's just like on another level again, yeah. and you're just like, "Wow!" So yeah, it was it was just gorgeous. Frustratingly, the wildlife that you do get to see from the bus is frustratingly too far away. Yeah. I was the only person with a lens longer than 200 mil on the bus uh, because I had that beautiful 100 to 500 mil lens from Tamron. Thank you, Blonde Robot. And that was fantastic, you know, and that got me closer to what wildlife there was to see. But frustratingly, the bears just won't look at you when you want them to, (laughs) you know, and and they wander behind trees. They're very inconsiderate. And the moose, the moose are just as bad. <laughs> they, <laughs> they just don't care. It's almost like they're not a tourist attraction. <laughs> it's, it's like they just don't care for the tourist dollar glint. Unbelievable. Seriously. Issue. No one's working. <laughs> oh, it's Trump's fault. <laughs> That's right. Um, um, for anyone who does want to go to Alaska and yep. wants to actually take good photos of animals. Yep. I mean, like jaw-dropping opportunities of amazing opportunities, day after day of amazing opportunities. You're going to tell me about your friend Lisa. Go see my friend Lisa Langell, L-A-N-G-E-L-L. She's, she, she's up there for about three months of the year running yep. photo tours. Yeah, and, uh, I've, I've seen some of her stuff. Like, I follow her on Facebook now after you mentioned yeah. it. And, yeah, the stuff she gets is gorgeous. Just remarkable. So if you want, yeah. an, if you want to go to an experienced operator who's guaranteed to get you on the money for the animals, now, that's yeah. a, a dedicated photo tour, which, of course, is completely different from what you did. So it's to be expected yeah. to get what you get, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we did, uh, we did a river cruise on a jet boat. And uh, we got to see quite a few uh, bald eagles on that trip. Um, so that was good. Is that because the boat goes so fast they lost their hair? <laughs> it could be. Could be. Yeah, look, the, the whole trip was amazing. You know, the helicopter flight out to the glacier to go sledding with the dogs was a great experience. And the dogs that we went sledding behind, they are actually a competition team who run in the Iditarod. Oh, cool. And um, they basically take them up to this glacier during the off-season. Yeah, training. You know, yeah, you yeah exactly. Yeah. Yes. I've got, I've got we, to ask, we, did you pick up any tips of how you could run your dog better uh, on his bike? <laughs> no, I did not really? ask for tips. <laughs> it seemed like you put a lot of effort into it then, Bruce. A lot of forethought. <laughs> But um, you know that was it was great. It was a good experience. And then uh, you know we went up to uh, we went to Fairbanks. And then we did the flight up to the Arctic Circle. The place that we flew up to called Coldfoot. It's not even a village. It's just a workers' camp mm-hmm. with these little demountable cottages that the workers sleep in, and it's got a a diesel 
you know, fuel tank to fill up all the, you know, the trucks that are... Because it's essentially... Coldfoot is basically the halfway point between Fairbanks and Prudho Bay, which is right up on the northern uh, coast of Alaska. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember which sea that is. Is it the Barents Sea? Barents. Bering. Yeah, Bering, is it? Right, yeah. Uh, So they're bringing oil in through Prudho Bay and then trucking it down to Fairbanks and onto Anchorage and then, you know, shipping it out. Yeah, so Coldfoot is kind of this little pit stop in the middle of nowhere literally and yeah you you fly in there and you go and have lunch at the little roadhouse and then you hop on the bus for the the drive back down to Fairbanks and of course you know as soon as we well I mean even before we flew up there we knew that it was just going to be solid cloud cover the whole way back the bus driver was overly optimistic going oh don't worry you know we're, we're bound to see a glimpse here or there and it's like yeah no, nah, we're not seeing a glimpse of anything <laughs> but um yeah so yeah we did our 12 days in Alaska and then we hopped on the cruise ship in Whittier uh, and had our seven-night cruise down, uh, stopping at Juno, Ketchikan, and Skagway. Is it any whales? Uh, that's a no. I you believe, can't think of it believe, immediately. I'm yeah, no. A... I think some someone else said they saw orcas, yeah. and every time I went to find them, they'd gone. Um, <laughs> to you. It's not, yeah, yeah, not yeah, exactly. Trump, it's you. Exactly. And, and the glaciers that we saw from the cruise ship, whilst they were good uh, they, and they were impressive, we didn't get as close yeah. as we did when we did our little 26 glacier tour out of Whittier. Funny about um, that. Do you mean a dedicated glacier tour versus a screw? Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. And, and, and of course, the, the the boat we were on for that tour was, you know, only a 150 yeah. head capacity. So they were able to get a lot closer to the glacier than the cruise ship could, you know, run the risk of doing. Yeah, we did that. And then we got down to Vancouver. Absolutely loved Vancouver. Isn't it a beautiful city, hey? It is gorgeous. If I had to move to another city, I'd move back there. Yeah, I I can understand that. And so it was great to catch up with my mate Chad from Seattle. He drove up and uh, we deliberately got a two-bedroom Airbnb so that he could, you know, crash with us for a couple of nights. And we went and drove up to Whistler. Whistler Black Home. And we did, oh, there's this, uh, what do they call it? Sea to Sky cable car Mm -hmm. that runs. From the Sea uh, to the Sky? From the sea to the sky, yeah, it's a phenomenal elevation change. And well, um, sea to the unless the sky is really low, it usually yeah. is. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. Um, so we did that, and then the morning that that we were leaving, Chad had to hit the road because he had he had other commitments back in Seattle. So we said goodbye to him, and then he dropped us off at a train station, and Kath and I took our luggage on the train, and we trained it into the centre of the city, and we decided that we would find somewhere to drop our luggage, and we would go and have breakfast in the city before we headed out to the airport. So we found a place where we could stash our bags for a couple of hours for a few bucks, and then... We didn't have 3G or 4G coverage on our phones. We were just using Wi-Fi everywhere we went. So we're wandering around and around and around, trying to find somewhere to have breakfast. And uh, we're standing on this corner at a set of traffic lights. And I said, oh, look, there's a copper over there. I'll go and ask him. They'll know where there's a good spot for breakfast. And Kath goes, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. So we crossed the street. You trust your opinion, I see. (laughs) Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we crossed the street. I've walked up to this copper and I said, Oh, g'day, mate. How's it going? And, he, and he's he's on his phone and he's gone, Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second and send. And then he's looked up at me and he's gone, How are you? And I said, Yeah, not too bad. And yourself? And he's gone, Good. What can I do for you? And I said, Mate, we're looking for somewhere for breakfast. Do you know if there's anywhere good around? And he goes, oh, he said, well, if you go up this street here and you hang a left, he says, there's a couple of places along there. He said, but if you turn right about 50 metres along on the other side of the road, he said, there's a place called something or other. I can't remember what it was called now. And he goes, they do a really good breakfast. He said, and they have really nice coffee and it generally doesn't get too too busy. I went, mate, that sounds perfect. I said, we'll, we'll go and give that a go. And he goes, where are you from? I said, Australia. He goes, have you been following the rugby? 
<laughs> what? I said, uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I said, I just got off a cruise ship. He goes, all oh, right. And then he starts telling me all about the rugby. <laughs> He was a South African, but say, working as a copper many, in the... Uh, many Canadians into the <laughs> rugby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was very excited about the rugby union. Um, but uh, now, but very just say, friendly. As, as, as yeah. uh, uh, an aside, you, you're, if you're ever in doubt of somewhere good to eat in a city, you always ask the police. Oh, totally. Always ask the police. They, totally. uh, they know every good local spot. That that stands out because these people on the they have a, a thousand or two thousand people to, to get references from who only yep. ever eat at places where the stuff's fast, good, hot, yeah, clean. Yep. Yeah, That's they're it. always great places to people to ask. Yeah, so. absolutely. So and, and it was just it was just the nicest experience that this copper would you know smile on his face and more than happy to help and you know pointed us to what turned out to be an absolutely yeah, those Canadians, fantastic even if they're South African those Canadians are yeah. very nice see <laughs> absolutely even the even South African oh, Canadians the the reputation that Canada has for being polite it's just is fully is earned. under is understated. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was like yeah. you you couldn't have offended them if you tried. Oh, yeah, we tried, we tried. It's <laughs> just amazing. It's funny, isn't just it? Just such lovely but, yeah, people to interact with. If you had to live with America on your doorstep, you'd, you could just stand out as being different, wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's just. But no, nah, if we have an if we have an American listener, <laughs> <laughs> if we've got any left. <laughs> Now, as I've always said, Americans as individuals are lovely people. It's the exactly. place as a whole yes. the problem. <laughs> Since 2005, Shutters Inc. has been a labour of love. But beyond the time required to produce it, there is also a financial commitment. If you find value in the podcast and would like to help keep the servers running, hit up the Patreon link, which is in the show notes. Even a couple of dollars a month will help. Much appreciated. Now, back to the podcast. But I, I, I heard a, a, a politi- an orange haired politician who we won't mention <laughs> again. One of his pol- one of his policies for next next election, if he gets in, is to uh, give give schools who are who have teachers who conceal carry more money than ones that don't. <laughs> like, what? J- Jim Jeffries, the comedian Jim Jeffries, does a great yeah. piece on on arming school teachers. It's like, you know, do you ever have that yeah. emergency teacher? And when she's arrived, you look to it and you've got, I'm going to make her cry. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to give her a gun. <laughs> and that's, and that's very true. Uh, I, mean, I, I, yes. I punched one of my, I, I made one of my teachers cry, and I punched one of my teachers. You don't want, I don't want these people wow. armed. Mind you, might have made me a better student. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, so Alaska dear. was fabulous. So, That's good to hear, right? It it was. Uh, you know, we absolutely enjoyed the trip, even though you know I didn't get to get the photos that I wanted of the of the aurora. We yeah. still had a great time. We loved everywhere we went, and we yeah you know, met some great people and had some great times and made some great memories. You know, so just just yeah. to, just to to make you feel not like it's only you. I was down in Tassie last week, and they had one oh, of the biggest. No. They had one of the biggest aurora yes. um, of of the year. Yes, uh, and it was huge and monstrous, and we were completely clouded out. Oh, you're kidding! So, just, just say that. Doesn't matter where you go, there you are. Yeah, <laughs> <In the clouds. laughs> totally. So, so yeah, yeah, that was that was a, a typical irony. You had, you had to smile, and and of course, every other. So we're there for six, no, five nights, five nights. Every single night was clear except for that one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's Unbelievable. Just, it's uncanny how it happens. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't yeah. matter where you are in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's too funny. So, so Kath and I have, have talked about in a couple of years, probably in 25, because that's our general modus operandi. We do a domestic holiday one year, an international yeah. holiday the next. We'll probably. She's still really hell bent on seeing Croatia, yeah. uh, so we we may do but Croatia stunning, next. A stunning place. So you, you, oh yeah, yeah, you would love totally. It, yeah, but we we did also talk, or or I I talked about you know maybe next time we'll just go and do you know Denmark or Iceland, you know somewhere in northern Europe where we can see the uh, the aurora 
you know, from there. Because uh, she, she has a girlfriend who lives in the Netherlands. And I said, you know, why don't, why don't we go to the Netherlands and we can catch up with Janine? And so that seed has been planted. So we might do that next or we might be doing Croatia. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the last three months of my life. <laughs> It's such a busy little period for you, dude. It has been a heck of a year. It really has. And and along the way, and this is not something we've spoken about on the podcast, Kath lost her dad. Oh, no, that's not good. And she then lost a cousin about yeah. a month ago. And, and, of course, then to lose the dog as well, she was like, God, yeah. this has just been a year of goodbyes and, you know, and goodbye to Springfield as well, you know, where we used to live. So, yeah, it's it has certainly been a year packed with memorable events, some of them good and some of them not good, but memorable nonetheless. We so. were just My wife and I were just talking yesterday, how it seems that 2020, or it could have been this morning, 2020 was a tipping point. And these last three years, there's been just so much upheaval for so many people. Yeah. It, it's just, just seems astounding. And it's just, it just seems to be never ending. And, uh, and I see so many people posting the same, the same sort of sentiment, you know? Yeah, right. And life has just, That's just, interesting. just been constant turmoil for the last three years. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 it certainly can feel that way sometimes. You know, I, I certainly felt that way. And, you know, with my yeah. health and stuff. So. And how is your health? Oh, uh, it's, 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 I'm, I'm th- well, put it this way. Let's put it this way. So I'll tell you about my, my, my last couple of months. I went and did the Bright Festival of Photography uh, weekend. Nice. And that was the first dealing with people work I've done in three years, three and a half years. Wow. So it was like, it was like a... It was like a when, when you say dealing with people, you mean in a group, because you've done a couple of one-on-ones. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, I thought no, you I, had. I have, not, I have not dealt with... Oh, oh. No, I, lied. I did one, but that, oh, okay. that was booked pre-2020. I did oh, one right. afternoon okay. with one guy because um, yeah, right. I figured that was manageable. Um, so it was the first time sort of testing the ability to, to still do this and still yep. function and everything else. And, and, and um, how did you go? And, and well, it, it was, it's like a, um, a test of fire because there were I did two two-hour workshops a day with 20 people in each one. Right. Yeah, that's a lot of people in a very short yeah. period of time. And, yeah. uh, <clears throat> of course, everyone needs to get shots and... And he's yeah. setting up lights for the nighttime one, and uh, and so it was. It, look, it was a lot of fun. I said, first up, for anyone who hasn't been to the Bright Festival of Photography and um, likes, as in, in a reasonable regional area where they can sort of get to it. You know, we're not saying if you live in America, yeah. come to it, but uh, if you're New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria, it, it's it's uh, remark. It's a great event. It's probably the, Australia's best photographic weekend i would say right they have yeah i think it was something like 130 workshops in two and a bit days wow um which is really quite amazing so that so that was really good so i did i did two four workshops i built an entire new talk and did a talk up there and my talk was my photos are shit i don't know why i bother (laughs) so it it was a motivational talk and how many people attended that talk um oh there was about 50 or 60 Nice, I guess. You know, as as much as that's kind of a, a tongue in cheek title, I think it's the kind of title that would attract people because well, yeah, a lot of people didn't, would relate. Because the, that's not how it was advertised. Because I didn't know what I didn't know what the talk was going to be until I finished it the day before the event. So <laughs> right. um, the the actual um, title for the talk was "Egotist Stands on Stage and Talks About Himself." <laughs> Nice, uh, but, but I think it also said and shows off his photos. Right, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the genuine title of the talk. <laughs> now, uh, this entire event is is designed to be not taking itself too seriously, which is one of the okay. reasons I enjoyed it. I think is you yeah. could have. A, um, so, w- one of my workshops is called "Great Photos in Shit Locations." Yes, yeah. but, but of course, I figured that's a fair bit of pressure, so I made up a sign because there's no. It's a little disorganised. There's nowhere to say, "Well, this is where you meet your group." So I made the yep. sign. I just stood outside the hall, yelling at the top of my voice. And but I changed the name of I changed the name of the event to uh, "Shit Photos in Great Locations" because I figured that's a lot less pressure. <laughs> and so I, I just walked around yelling that at the top of my lungs and gathering people as they came along. Um, so it's, it's it's designed not to take itself too seriously, but be quality content. Yeah. Yeah. So I yep. couldn't manage that part, but at least I got the. <laughs> Not taking this up too seriously, right? <laughs> yeah, and then Tamron, uh, who who 
they took me up there for the weekend, Tamron Australia. They uh, employed me for the weekend to do that. Mm-hmm. They had uh, that little stand, this little area where store, you know, manufacturers could have their stuff set up and talk to customers. So I hung around there for a bit each day and talked to some peoples. And um, nice. so yeah, so so I, so health wise, I, I survived it. I was I was pretty exhausted. Come about you know, nine thirty each night. And yep. just had to go and sort of, just sort of collapse. So I didn't yep. do a lot of the so, a lot of the social things were I didn't end up doing because they they I don't know how the organisers do it, but they they not only do they work for not they're up like six in the morning till like ten at night, and then they put on events and parties afterwards. Right. This is, to give you an idea how big this thing is. They had a they had a fireworks display this year for the first time. And to mm. make sure photographers had enough time to get good shots, it went for half an hour. Oh, lovely. Which is 15 minutes longer than the New Year's Eve fireworks in Sydney. Yeah. Yeah, obviously not the same, but a long, a long firework display, you know. Unfortunately, my workshop was still running during it, so I could only see it in the distance. But um, Were all of the, like, the, each firework, were they spaced out a little bit more, like, in terms of time? Uh, no, they were, they were doing them fairly constantly. Wow. And in reasonable clusters. So yeah, nice. yeah, the display itself looked pretty good, but um, wow, yeah, it was it was so that was so it's an impressive event. There's, I think it was five hundred attendees or five hundred and fifty nice. attendees, something like. That. So if you have the opportunity, the, the, the tickets have just gone on sale for next year's, which is in October, uh, for, to the general public. So um, nice, highly recommend anyone who wants to do that. So based on that, I was I was feeling pretty pretty darn good afterwards, and I caught yeah. up with the. The guys from the Down South Photo Show podcast. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Who are my mates Cam and Brendan who run that, and yeah. um, they were both. Cam was running workshops. Brendan was up there just learning stuff and promoting his show. <clears throat> so I talked to Brendan. He owns Ocean Grove Camera and Photo down in the beach area down here in Victoria, and nice. uh, so we've we've put on two workshops for him. So I've actually put on actual work. Nice. nice. And are these workshops just a talk, or are you no, actually shooting? No, it's actual full-on six-hour, yeah, two-hour, um, two-hour seminar, four-hour shoot. Back to nice. my normal full-day workshops for the first time in, I said, three and a half. By then, it'll be four years. Right. So when are they scheduled for? January, February, something like that. I can't remember. Nice. Yeah. But one's already sold out, and one's half sold out, so that's pretty good. Beautiful. And uh, and then based on all that enthusiasm, and feeling good, I put on an India tour. Nice for October, yeah, nice. sorry, November next year. So I'm now I'm now running a, a a tour to India. So if anyone's got any interest in coming along, drop me a line. I'll send you all the info. Um, you know, you know, nobody needs to go to India now. What was that? I because put so many photos you've up on you've saturated the market with photos. <laughs> I feel Facebook there's nothing in India. for anyone to see now. <laughs> Put a couple of photos up. I finally got around to looking at a whole bunch of photos I'd never looked at before. So, yeah. Well, the thing is, I was I was going. I, I needed to put together the brochure and the um, yeah. Uh, for, yeah. So, I, so I just went. Oh, I don't want to keep showing the same photos I've always shown. So I went and yeah. found a whole bunch of new ones, and um, realised there's tons that I'd never even seen. So yeah. So I have yeah. I did. I did kind of spam Facebook for a few days there. So that's <laughs> so we're going up there for the Pushkar Camel Festival again, which is. Um, Remarkable is where you get all the nomadic uh, camel tribes come down from the hills and trade camels in this big open air uh, field, basically. And yep. um, you know, there's thousands of camels and yeah, all these really cool looking people. So we're going up for that, which would be great. Yeah. So I'm feel I'm feeling. Uh, I think I think when I came back, I I, I felt uh, what was the word I used for the trouble and strife. I don't know, like a proper human being again for the first time in a few years. Like I had a nice, like I ex- like I existed again a bit. Is probably yeah. the best way to sort of describe it. Yeah, you, know, you can get, tend to disappear if you're just at home all the time, feeling sorry for yourself and stuff. For sure. Yeah, and you can. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I, I don't know what you're doing for physical exercise, whether you're still on the bike or not. But I said to Kath the other day, I said I don't know if it is you know, these morning rides or or not. But I really feel like I'm in a better place mentally. Yeah. And she said, well, that, you know, your bike ride will definitely do that for you. you yeah, know, and the new house exercise. and new, new, and, new, yeah. all the stuff. Yeah, and the shorter commute. Yeah, yeah all those com- all that combinations of taxing stuff and, and you're doing more pleasurable stuff and less, you know, miserable yeah. stuff. And yeah, it's- yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of, but absolutely the, the daily, yeah, those those dolphins that get in your system when you're cycling, 
That's that'll, right. That'll make you feel good, you know. That's the whole That's point right. of those dolphins. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's exactly it. I was trying to. I had. Did I have something else? I, I've been doing. A, I wrote a few little notes down to remind myself. Right, Ocean Grove, India. No, I went. So, so I went to Tansy with the family. That was. That was. Uh, we. Yeah. We uh, did a, a quick. Um, so we're supposed to be going to England for five weeks. N- oh, like okay. now, we're supposed to be there now. Uh, but then medical issues with the kids, with me, with, but with yeah, both so both kids. My wife's work just exploded into nuttiness. So it's just no, no. So we, but we desperately needed a break. So we thought we'd just pop down to Tassie over the long weekend, and and the kids had never been down there. So that was that was nice. lovely. We uh, hit all the sites, saw a whole bunch of animals. I saw even, even saw animals I didn't expect to see. Like bandicoots in the wild. Wow! Yeah, I didn't expect to see bandicoots in the wild. And nice. What else did we saw? Saw some other 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 odd stuff that yeah you just don't expect to yeah you'll actually see. Tassie um, devil. Didn't see any of those in the wild, unfortunately. Nah. We, did, we did see them in the. In, we went to a, a, san, a sanctuary that was yeah. it's an animal hospital and sanctuary. So yeah. we went there and um, and so the kids could, but that would guarantee the kids to see those animals. Yeah. And uh, we w- watched them doing an operation on a uh, a baby bandicoot. Actually, it had been oh, attacked wow. by it had been attacked by a cat. We did see we did see a baby uh, paddy melon uh, in, in the wild. Oh, yeah. But it's if it's mum's pet. So the, for the people who know, paddy melon's like a really short kangaroo, about a half yeah. size kangaroo. But it's probably it's maybe two and a half feet tall, less than a metre tall. But it's ba- this one had a baby sticking out of its pouch, and I reckon its head would have been no more than four inches. Uh, and its leg, it has head and leg, its, its leg would have been thinner than your little finger. Right. But about twice as long. Yeah, but it was, right. it was spindly, and I've never seen such a tiny little thing that, you know, that didn't require medical assistance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely tiny. So, so you know, again, and this is the thing, when you, when you like, like your trip to Alaska and like this trip with the, with the family, you, if you're a photographer and you're doing a family vacation, you don't get to be in places you want to be at times you would like ideally to be, and you, know, yeah. you don't have you don't get to take the all the gear you'd like to take and all that kind of stuff. You just make the most of, you know. Yeah. And again, as often I've, I found I took more photos of my iPhone than the camera, which was out and on my neck all the time. <laughs> uh, I still took more photos of my iPhone because it's, it's I don't know, the immediacy of it all. But uh, we were lucky. We we got up to uh, we had the the, the the most perfect weather of. Uh, it was forecast to be overcast and thirteen degrees every day, hmm. and it was sunny and about seventeen eighteen degrees every day, <laughs> nice. except for when the aurora was going yes. nuts and it was overcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, but we got we got up to Cradle Mountain, which you know, I want to take the kids up to see because it's stunningly yep. beautiful. Yeah, and there was still some snow at the top there, which was awesome. So that was lovely, a, kind of a little added bonus and. Uh, Took some nice photos, got some great memories with the kids, and you know, nice. so you need that de stress time to put the world back in a little bit of balance. Yeah, exactly. So that was yeah. a yeah, that was a good thing. So that, that, that things are looking up on the on the upside here, both in health oh, I'm and glad, glad to hear that. And, yeah, feel like I said, feel like an actual human being. Yeah, and it's and it's good to hear that you're uh, yeah getting back into running some workshops and things. Yeah, and- yeah. And I said, uh, well, I hope I'll be back. I'll get invited back to the Bright Festival of Photography. I was I was pretty mean to a lot of people, so I don't know. We'll have to, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see through a fair whack of insults at people, right? But yeah, so that'll be that'd be another thing to kind of look forward to, and it's kind of nice to have a couple of events to look forward to and stuff to yeah you know, yeah yeah. It gives you motivation also to keep healthy or to or to improve and get better too. Yeah, it's just not. Yeah, so it's been a busy couple of months for me too, dude. That's what I'm basically trying to say. Excellent. So let's not talk about stuff tonight. We, I think we've no, we've, we've had I a lovely lovely chat about crap. Just catching up on three months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or yeah, however, however, it really doesn't. It does feel like a very long time. I must say, it, it has been a long break. Yeah. But I said, if anyone wants information on in, in India, drop me a line. Oh, you should come, dude. Forget forget, your, forget your, your every second year being an international holiday. <laughs> tell your wife to go somewhere by herself, and you come. Yeah, you come yeah. with me. When when are you going? November two to fifteen. Okay, of twenty four. Twenty four. So a year okay. away. Plenty yeah. time to 
get forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Cool. All right, mate. Well, good to chat. You too. Take care, everybody. And we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. You shall. All right, mate. Bye. See ya. All right. So for those of you who are slightly acoustically aware, I will have, when I've run off this podcast, have tried to process the audio and remove some of the live sound of this room. So just to give you an idea of what this room sounds like without any processing, this is it. So as you can hear, there's quite a bit of reverb here. Uh, I do have some acoustic foam that I'm going to build into some diffusion panels and absorption panels. And once I get those up, hopefully this room will sound a bit closer to like what I had before or even better. But anyway, there you go. All right. Good to be back. Talk soon. You've been listening to Shutters Inc. For questions, comments and feedback, email theboys at shuttersincpodcast.com.